I know it's 22 K, so. Right, R112. There it is, R111. Okay, that's connected to 210 volts. Comes down. Do a 560 ohm. So that trimmer. Three thirty ohms. And then it goes to what appears to be a lead one five six one five or oh, one five six fifty five C goes to a, it goes to a junction I think. Right, so one five six Well, it doesn't tell you where it goes, which page or anything. Um, right, right, so I've got a silver page. Which one, five, six, is not connected on here somewhere. Ah! It does. Figure three. Figure three. That is right. So we have big three. I'm basically bug hunting. Mm. I'm looking for the the fault. So I've got to trace where these connections are going. So. Now remember that resistor is very crispy on the uh, on the PCB. It looks like it's been really baked. Um, so what I'm thinking is that the voltage through it. Ten volts. Uh, Hundred and ten volts comes in up here. 
all the way down here. ago I started working on my oscilloscope my it's it's from 1970s from the network it's got a lot of the components in it I dated 1971 
And I started working on it and I couldn't find the fault. I replaced some capacitors. Um, and anyway, the um, everything seemed to check out. And uh, I'll use my spotlight because it's uh, the camera's not, but this phone thing's not very good. But I've actually done quite a lot of work on it over the years. I've actually replaced quite a lot of the. Um, I've put different transistors in here. I'll put heat sinks on them. And that capacity is original. I stuck a label on it and I marked it. And I've actually replaced. Let's see now. One, two. Uh, that's it. Three. Don't get it on. Um, four. Don't see. Four, five, six, seven, eight. No, no, about eight capacitors. Anyway, um. Last night, I decided to have another go at it. And... Basically, I'm just about to give in, give up, to be honest. Well... And guess what? Yes, you've guessed it. It's working again. That noise is um, that noise is not from the input. It's because the um, case well, the case is off at the moment. If I put my hand near the side, right, earth ground it, you can see the noise disappears. It's because the it's because the case is off. But yeah, there's some interference on there, but that's only because the case is off. Is my other beam working? Yes. So, is it fixed? Well, yes and no. There's two sides of the coin. Uh, having replaced these capacitors last night, um, it became quite apparent, having checked voltages and things, that this, that the transformer and the CRT is on its way out because that is full brightness. That is down. So that is actually full brightness. To give you some idea of how bright that is, my fingers there, and I'm ambient light. You can see my fingers in this dim light. And if I shine my torch at this, right, you can see I mean, it's not very bright. It's kind of dim. So, yeah, the, I've got probably, probably a, a bit of more life, probably a few months maybe. But it depends how much it's used, I suppose. But um, at least it's working for now. Now, the reason I say that is because the transformer is very rusty. Um, it's actually very corroded. It's rusting, and um, that's always a bad sign. If you've got rust on the transformer, which we have here, rust around the laminations, you can almost be certain that um, the coils themselves aren't in very good condition either. And I've, I've got a suspicion that might be an intermittent fault. Um, I mean, okay, I've replaced the capacitors, but it's been sat for like six, seven months or so since I took it apart. And it might just have decided to come back to life temporarily. So, because I check the capacitors and they all, re they all check out fine. There's no bulging. Um, These are the ones I replaced last night. There is a slight amount of bulging, but on the rubber, but there's no real bulge that I can see. 
that's the main high voltage one. And these are the these are low voltage, and you can see from the reflection, there's no bulging on that either. And it actually reads pretty good. It actually does read um, quite a good uh, microfarad reading. Uh, it's, it's actually over range. I can't check it beyond uh, 200 microfarad, so it's way over that. And this is a smaller one. It's another one of the smaller ones I replaced, and that's um, 50 volt, 22 microfarad. That one looks healthy too, really. But there could be a possible short at higher voltages. I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'd have to actually put a voltage, you know, after, I'd have to charge them up to that actual maximum ready voltage to check the leakage. But anyway, and it's working for now. Anyway. <laughs> so just a little video. Um, I spent several hours last night going over the schematic. I'll try, I'll actually be, probably will have attached the, um, some of the video I did last night at the beginning of this anyway, so. Anyway, thanks for watching.